So God's never mad at me. He's pleased with us. Because when he looks at me, he sees the covering of Jesus. Jesus gets all of my sin. He becomes the sin offering for me. I repent upon the finished work of Christ. When I was baptized at the age of 10 at, at the Pentecostal church in St. Catharines, because we didn't have a baptismal tank, I got baptized upon the finished work of Christ. Whew. Repent, every one of you, repent, sorry, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in upon the name of Jesus for the forgiveness of sins. And that's the gospel. The gospel is Jesus gets my sin, I get his righteousness because that was the mission of Jesus. Now, if that's new to you today, here's something even more astounding. You know how you can make that applicable to you? You can pray that right now. Bang, just like that. You can make that confession of faith even right now. You can say in your heart, man, I didn't understand everything that guy said, but what that guy said, that's what I want. I want to repent of my sin, and, and, and I want all of the righteousness of Jesus, which makes absolutely no sense to me, but that's what I want. And you can do that sitting right where you are, just like that, and you become a believer. That is that incredible? Now, let me show you what people really goof up. Watch this. What, what do you do first? You, what do you do second? And then what happens is this. You receive what? You receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So we need to stop and we need to ask a simple question. What's the gift of the Holy Spirit? Mr. Stride wants to know that. I think that's a good question. Now, verse number 39 is going to help us. So read this with me. Ready? The promise. So stop. Now you should ask the next question. What's the promise? That's a great question. Dan has asked that. And uh, uh, you're in luck uh, because, you know what? I'm going to answer that in a second. So I'm going to hammer this again. First step. You repent upon the name of Jesus. Second step, you are baptized upon the name of Jesus. Step number three, you receive what is called the gift of the Holy Spirit. And it's further described in these terms in the promise. So you should be asking me by now, get on with it and tell me. Well, some people want to know what the promise is. So you're in luck, I'm going to tell you. So, if you have your phone ready, go to Luke 24, 49. Remember, you're still dealing with Dr. Luke here. You're going to Luke chapter 24, verse 49. Luke 24, 49. Jesus is talking here, and he says this. I am going to send you what my father had, had promised. This is good, because we're trying to find out what the promise is, right? I'm going to send you what my father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. So, the promise has to do with a couple of things. It has to do with the Father, and it has to do with being clothed with power. Right? You with me? Flip the page, or flip the finger, whatever, you know, when you get the next page. What, what is that scripture? Oh, that one, that's our text. That's Luke chapter 2, that one, brother. Okay. Acts chapter 2, sorry. So, we've just read Luke 24, 49. Now go to Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1, verse number 4. Acts chapter 1 verse 4 is a repeat of Luke chapter 24 verse 49. So plug that into your brain, okay? Acts chapter 1 verse 4 is a repeat of Luke chapter 24 verse 49. So in Acts chapter 1 verse 4, 
It says, on one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father has promised. Which you have heard me speak about. Now go back to chapter 20, or chapter 2. Go to chapter 2. I'm going to read just a little bit before this. I'm going to read in chapter 2, verse 32. Chapter 2, verse 32. So what has happened, and I'm going to get to this in about another five minutes. What has happened, it's the day of Pentecost. 120 people are gathered there. And uh, the Spirit of God falls on them. They all speak in other tongues as the Spirit gives them utterance. Then Peter stands up and he gives a definition as to what has happened. So this is Peter's definition, right? Watch this. Chapter 2, verse 32. God has raised this Jesus to life. We're all witnesses of this. He is Jesus is exalted to the right hand of God. Watch this. He has received from the Father the, the promise. The promised Holy Spirit and has now poured out what you have just seen. He has poured... He has poured out what you have just seen. So what is being poured out in Acts chapter 2 up to this juncture? Is anybody getting saved up to verse number 38? No. Is anybody getting baptized in water? No. What's happening? They're getting baptized in the Holy Spirit. They're receiving the, the promise. Jesus said, don't, 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 don't leave Jerusalem until you get the promise. And Peter picks up this word promise, and he describes exactly what that promise was. It was the Holy Spirit. So Luke describes for us in our text three things. Repentance upon the name of Jesus, baptism upon the name of Jesus, and the gift of the Holy Spirit, which was the promise. So we have to ask why bother? What's the point? Which is a good question. Here's the point. You ready? This is good. If you forget everything else, remember, remember this. Okay? So let's do it together. Read. The reception of the Spirit in Acts 2 empowers the normal believer, thus elevating all believers as prophets with inspired speech. I hope you get this. It's key. Well, I'll, I'll read it again. Okay? One more time. The reception of the Spirit in Acts 2 empowers the normal believer, thus elevating all believers as prophets with inspired speech. So in Acts chapter 2, God takes 120 people. He baptizes them all with the Holy Spirit. They all spoke in other tongues. And because of that, it elevated all of them and made them all prophets. Made them all prophets with inspired speech. They're all the same. So it wasn't like this guy was more inspired than this guy, or this person is more inspired, or this, more this person is more important. No, 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 no. It, it dropped the ball, and it made everybody, say everybody, made everybody inspired prophets. That's what Acts chapter 2 is all about. It elevates normal, everyday, Joe Blow people like us and empowers us to be inspired prophets of God. That's what Acts chapter 2 is all about. Whoa! Well, I thought that was a whoa. So here you go. Watch this. This is chapter 2. I put it up there so my wife could see it. Uh, and all you else have to look on your phones, okay? This is chapter 2, verse 5, okay? Now, they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews uh, from every nation under the sun. When they heard this sound, what sound did they hear? Well, they heard a rushing wind. What else did they hear? They heard 120 people prophesying about the resurrected Jesus. 120 of them, okay? They heard this sound. I'll show you why Jim was right. Jim was right because Jim is always right. No, that's not, no, I'll show you why Jim was right. Verse 6. When they heard this sound, the, the, the crowd came together in bewilderment, 
because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they said, uh, aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? How is it then that each of us hears them in our native tongue? And then he lists all, all the native tongues. And I'm not going to read that. Verse 12, they said, what? what on earth does this mean? What on earth does this mean? Then Peter stands up and he blows them out of the water. And this is how he blows them out of the water. He said, thanks for asking. And he stands up and he says, I'll tell you what's happening here. This is the fulfillment of the Joelic prophecy. And this is the prophecy. Watch. Are you still with me? Don't fall asleep. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on a selected few people that I happen to like. I'm going to pour out my spirit, and he says very clearly right here, I'm going to, I'm going to pour out my spirit on all people. How many are here and consider themselves people? That's, that's a fairly strong reputation or uh, representation. And so this says God wants to pour out his spirit on all of us. So watch this. So then what he does, he begins to let you in on a secret. Watch how he does this. Your sons and your daughters are going to prophesy. Now here's what's so interesting about that. I, I'm assuming you know this. Most people didn't live that long in Acts chapter 2, right? So they're all, you know, if you're living to 70, that's old back then, right? Life expectancy was very low. So um, if, you're, if you've got sons and daughters and you've got no, nobody over the age of 70, so that's old, so you might be having a lot of people that are dying earlier than that. Sons and daughters is a definite definition of what age bracket? Take a guess. Teens, absolutely. Probably 10 years old, 16 years old. And who is the spirit going to hit? The teens. The sons and daughters. Then he says, uh, uh, your young men are going to see visions. Again, uh, you know, playing with the text, young, young men, that's like Chris and Jeffrey and Dan. They're, they're tiny. They're young. Cause it's amazing who's young when you're 62. Eh? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah. And then, old men will dream dreams. <laughs> that's me and Bill. There we go, buddy. <laughs> right? So, Keep going, watch this. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit. So, so again, notice this text right here. He erases all gender barriers. Are you getting this? He has no standards. He wants to baptize everybody with the Holy Ghost and give us all inspired speech. Babies, teenagers, old people, men. He, he doesn't care. He has no standards. And we've created a standard for ministry and a standard for the anointing and a standard for Holy Spirit baptism and we rob the kingdom of God when we do that. That's not Bible. That's... Culture. I'm not going to do that because that'll take too long. Read this. Ready? The reception of the Spirit in Acts 2 empowers the normal believer, thus elevating all believers. Our mission at STPA, soon to be one of those other three, <laughs> is, to, is to mobilize every member of the family according to their God-given destiny. Early on in, in our ministry here, 
Larry Brett uh, started doing some street ministry. And out of that grew our uh, outreach cafe. What, what do we call that thing? Solid rocks and bingo. And um, people were going up to Larry and they were mistaking Larry for the pastor. They would say to Larry, are you the pastor? Right? Vi said this to me once. Um, this is a long time ago. I, see, I listen to everything you say, Violet. I forget one particular Sunday. This is a long time ago, 10 years, 15 years ago, 20 years ago. I can't remember. And uh, I, I can't remember if I preached that Sunday. I really can't remember. But Len Stride and I had basically done the service together. And she said, you know the problem with this service to this morning? I said, what? She said, you couldn't tell who the pastor was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because God is interested in elevating everybody as prophets with inspired speech. Well, some of you are kind of getting it. Some of you may get it. Don't worry if you don't get it. Because we're going to pound this at you for the next year. You'll get it. <laughs> so Acts tells the story, okay? The story is about empowering people. Acts tell the, tells the story of salvation and then tells the story of empowerment. Empowerment of everyday kind of people who with inspired speech bring the message of the resurrected Jesus to the city they're in. And that's what Acts is about. I'm looking for one thing. This is the one I'm looking for, and then I'm going to hang my head on this and rest. Our mission is to mobilize every member of the body, so how does this work? Well, it works like this. So if you go to chapter 4, let me tell you what happens in chapter 3, and then I'll tell you what happens, how it goes in chapter 4. Chapter 3, Peter heals a lame man at the gate, beautiful, in the temple. The Pharisees and all the then-known church got really upset because you can't go around healing people. Like, what are you doing, eh? And uh, so they, they haul Peter and John in front of the Sanhedrin, 72 stuffy individuals. And uh, they're trying to get Peter and John to stop preaching about Jesus. So they ended up letting them go. And after they let them go, they went back to the, the home church, which at this time is pushing pretty close to 5,000. Okay? And so the believers on, on Peter and John's release, they pray. So this is in chapter 4, verse 23. On their release, Peter and John went back to their own people. They reported all that the chief priests and the elders had said to them. And when they heard this, they raised their voice to God in prayer. Sovereign Lord, you made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and everything in them. And then from verse 24 through uh, to verse um, 20... Uh, through, through verse number 30, is the prayer. And I'm not going to read the prayer. So after the prayer, are, are you with me with the narrative? After the prayer, verse 31. And the place where they were gathered, see it up here, the place where they were meeting was shaken. And what was the result of that shaking? Who? All. Not a select few, not like these two and this person and this person. Everybody, they're all filled with the Holy Spirit. And what did they do when they're all filled? They spoke the word of God boldly because they had inspired speech. What does Pentecost do? Acts chapter 2. It takes all of us and creates within all of us the ability to move forward in the prophetic and the power of the Holy Spirit. One more scripture, and then I'm quitting. In the Acts narrative, by the time you get to Acts chapter 8, Jerusalem's getting very plagued with, Jeru with, with uh, persecution. So watch this. On that day, a great persecution broke out against the church in Jerusalem. Watch this. All the pastors, or everybody is scattered. Watch this. And 
Everybody is scattered except the pastors. You ever seen that before? So what was the success of the new church? They kept the pastors shut up in Jerusalem. They sent all the people out and the gospel spread which is totally opposite from the way you think you should do it. You'd think you should keep all the believers in Jerusalem and send the pastors out. Well, it's not what happened, right? All except the apostles were scattered throughout Jerusalem and Judea. Why? Or, sorry, Jerusalem or Judea and Samaria. Why? Because everybody's a prophet. You don't have to have credentials to be a prophet. You don't have to have the title, the pastor. Everybody's the prophet. That's what Pentecost is all about. Who wouldn't want it? Seriously, who in their right mind wouldn't want it? Hallelujah. Seriously, think about it. Yeah. I can go forth and I can speak the word of God with boldness under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. What we're going to do now, we're going to do two things, and then I'm closing. Very quickly. Maybe you're here. You would like that experience. The encounter team, I'm going to ask you to help me, so get ready. Uh, if you're here and you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit, you want this experience. Uh, receiving spirit baptism is as easy as getting saved. So you know how you get saved. Jesus does everything and you just sit there and do nothing. Well, it's kind of like getting baptized in the Spirit, to be honest with you. Um, maybe you're not ready for that today. I encourage you to come Wednesday night to the encounter night. We will pray for people on Wednesday night, specifically for spirit baptism on Wednesday night. So you may want to come today, right now, or you want to may, may come Wednesday night. Whatever you're good with, we're delighted to do that. Thank you, Lord, for your word.